Hi there, welcome to Board Gems. This is my video series in which I take an older forgotten gem and highlight it. Uh, sometimes it's an older game that people have moved on from. Um, sometimes it's not that old, but just didn't make a big splash when it came out. But for whatever reason, people aren't talking about it anymore. Um, and you know what, these games are still good and we shouldn't forget about them. So just a heads up, I'm keeping this a uh, little bit on the DL, this video because it's early morning and my family's still sleeping. So this isn't uh, the same as some of my usual videos. If this is your first time watching a board gem, they're not all like this. Um, I'm just trying to kind of be a little bit subtle with my presentation today. Um, so this video is unique because it's one of a pair of videos I'm making. Um, I have a request. Uh, basically, I, there's one person on Board Game Geek who donated a lot of uh, the currency of that site, the, the geek gold, over 2,000 geek gold to me and uh, for these, uh, for the videos I'm doing. So well, that's very nice. So I approached them and I said, well, do you have a request, right? <laughs> um, since you are a benefactor. And uh, he would like me to do a video on Colorado, which I will do, uh, but that's not this video. That's the other video. When you watch this video, if you're curious at all, they kind of tie together to a second video um, this will be in the other video, so I recommend you check that out. But this video is going to be about a slightly different game. Colorado um, is a card game, came out uh, early 2000s, designed by uh, Michael Schacht or Michael Schacht and Abacus. They make many games together, and this is an evergreen card game, still popular today, still has new versions. I think the last new version came out just three or four or five years ago. And in the year, I want to say around 2008, uh, they made a kind of a big box version of it, um, a family strategy board game, kind of in the vein of like a Carcassonne or Ticket to Ride. And that game was called Zuloretto. And it was successful. It won the Spiel des Jahres, the game of the year in Germany that year. And so it's had a number of expansions and spinoffs. Um, one of the spinoffs is not very famous anymore. And that's Zuloretto Mini. Um, this has also been published as Zuloretto Junior, which is a little misleading. It now, it is a simpler version of Zuloretto, um, but simpler in the sense that it actually is a nice in-between. It's a really interesting halfway point between the little card game of Coloretto and the little bit bigger, it's not really that more involved, but it's a little bit longer, it's a little bit, there's a little bit more going on in Zuloretto. Um, Zuloretto takes the basic mechanism of Coloretto and adds more stuff, and this one is kind of a regression. It kind of goes back... And it's kind of an interesting halfway point in between the two. Uh, it's for two to five players, ages seven and up. And that's a really probably appropriate age range because it's kind of in between a children's game and a, a game that adults can, you know, a, adults can enjoy it as well. But it's simple enough that kids could play it with an adult's help, absolutely no question. So seven and up is right on target for this. And it takes about a half hour to play. I'd say that's pretty accurate. I'm going to show you how this plays first. Then afterwards, I'd like to go over why I think it's a board gem. To set up the game, give every player a zoo. The zoo is composed of three parts, so they'll put them together like so. And there's four parts to your zoo. There's your barn, in which you're going to keep unwanted tiles or tiles you can't place. And you're going to have three enclosures that you can put animals in. You're going to add one truck per player. So if you're playing a three-player game, you would add three trucks. In a five-player game, you would add two more. In a two-player game, you'd actually flip some of these over to show these. And you'll use three trucks in a two-player game. But otherwise, you're gonna use one truck per player. Now there's a number of these animal tiles you can see here. There's actually seven different types of animals. You're going to fish through the bag and you're going to remove all 11 tiles of one animal for every player you're playing with fewer than five. So for a five player game, you're using all the tiles. But in a three player game, for example, instead of using all seven, you'll just use five. So you're going to actually remove, I actually have some, because I usually play the three player. So I actually have removed some and just keep them out of the out of the bag. So there are animal tiles. There's also what are called landscape tiles. And there's four different types of these. There's a third type there. 
So all of these are going to go into the bag and mixed up. Then you're going to draw 15 tiles. And try not to look at them. And it might be hard, but do your best. Try not to look at them. And you're going to put them in a stack to the side. You're not going to use them during the games. You can have a stack of 15 tiles. And on top of that, I get to put a little panda on there. Which reminds people, don't use this. <laughs> Keep this, save this for the panda. Leave this until the end of the game. What's going to happen is you're going to play through all the tiles in the bag. And when you run out of tiles, that's going to trigger the end of the game. And for the rest of that, you're still going to finish the round, though, and you're going to use tiles in here so you have enough tiles to finish the round. The last thing is we have these offsprings. They have these little circles. They have circles in the back as well. These don't go in the bag. Just keep them to the side. They may come in later. So pick a start player. Play is clockwise. When your turn comes around, you have two options. You can draw a tile from the bag and add it to one of the trucks, or you can take a truck as long as it has at least one tile. A truck can have one, two, or three tiles, but you can't take a truck if it's empty. So obviously the start player would have no choice. They would have to draw a tile, and it could be an animal or it could be a landscape, and they pick any of the trucks to add it to, like so. And then the next player could either draw a tile from the bag or take a truck. And in this case, the only truck they could take is this one. If they take it, the only tile they get is this one. When you take a truck, you put that in front of your zoo, you take all the tiles out, and you add them to your zoo. I'll explain that in a minute. But the important thing to note now is that once you take a truck, you're out of the round. You're not playing anymore. You're going to sit there with your truck and wait for the other players to finish. And the round will end when all players have taken the truck and added the tiles to their zoo. Then at the end of the round, all the trucks get returned to the middle, and the player who took a truck last in the previous round will, will start the next round by drawing a tile and adding it to a truck. Now, when you add, when you take a truck, you take all the tiles that are on it. So a truck might have as many as three tiles on it, but it could have as few as one before you take it. When you take a truck, you take the tiles, and you add them to your zoo, into any of the four places in your zoo. Each enclosure can only have at most one animal type. So if this was my first draw, I might add a llama to here and a meerkat to there, and they will stay there for the rest of the game. And I can never add different animals to these enclosures. This enclosure will always be for llamas. This one will always be for meerkats. And I'll be able to start a third animal type there. Landscape tiles can go anywhere. And they help you fill up an enclosure. You get a little bonus as soon as you fill up an enclosure with six tiles. Each enclosure can fit six tiles in it. And you'll get points for every unique type of landscape you have in your zoo. If later on you take a truck, so let's say you later on took a truck and it looked something like this. Well, that's good. The meerkat can go into this enclosure. That's not bad. But you only have one more enclosure and two different animals. You would choose one. You probably want to put in this enclosure. But the last one, you wouldn't have a choice. There's nowhere to put this. You don't have a free enclosure. So in this case, it goes into the barn. At the end of the game, anything in your barn will lose you points. So you don't want to have stuff in your barn if you can help it, but there's ways to get rid of it, which I'll explain. Animal tiles may also have a male or female symbol on them. And if ever you can create a pair, let's see if I can make a pair here. You realize I'll never be able to find a pair. Got two male llamas, keep going. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm still looking. Here we go. Okay, let's, let's suppose instead we had rhinos here, okay? Now you'll notice that some animals have 
a male or female symbol on them. That means that they're fertile. And if ever you're able to add a male and a female together into the same enclosure, they create one offspring. So you're gonna find the matching offspring, a little baby rhino, has a little circle on it. It was set aside at the beginning of the game. And you're gonna add it to the enclosure, like so. And you can't refuse that. So actually, if your enclosure was full and you added a baby, the baby would have to go into the barn in that case. Now, each couple will only make one offspring. To get a second offspring, you would need a second male and a second female. Now, as soon as you fill up um, an enclosure, so it is full, all six tiles, you get a bonus, a bonus action. And you can choose to either pick one tile from your barn and get rid of it, it gets shipped off to a foreign zoo or something, or you can take a tile in another player's barn and take it and immediately put it in an enclosure. The other player can't refuse that, by the way, and often they don't want to. They're, you're helping them out by helping them get rid of an animal. But you take their animal from their barn and you add it to one of your enclosures. Important to note that if you manage to fill up a second enclosure by taking a tile from another player's barn, you don't get another bonus action. You only get at most one bonus action uh, per, uh, per turn. So you're gonna keep playing just like this. At the end of the round, of course, all the trucks go back and you're gonna keep playing until the bag runs out. When the bag runs out, the remaining tiles you're gonna get from the stack here, but that's gonna mean the game is over. When this round is over and all players have taken a truck and added their tiles to their zoo, the game is over. And then you're gonna total up your points. For each enclosure, you're gonna count the number of animals in that enclosure and score the corresponding number of points. One, two, three, or four animals only scores you one, two, three, or four points, but you get bonuses if you can have five or six animals in an enclosure, and you get eight or 12 points. Plus, you'll get two points for every unique type of landscape that's in your enclosures. So in this case, this is scoring four points, two for this pond and two for this for the trees. Because I have two trees, the second tree doesn't give me any extra points. You're only getting two points for every unique landscape tile in your enclosures. And finally, for every unique type of tile in your barn, you are going to lose two points. So even if I have four ostriches in my barn, I'm still only losing two points. It's only every unique tile. Landscape tiles can also be in the uh, in your barn and they'll also lose your points if you're there. So total up your points and the player with the most points wins. That's it. You're ready to play Zularetto Mini and Zularetto Junior because they're the same game. I would guess a lot of people haven't heard of this game. Um, Colorado is very famous. Zularetto won the Spiel des Jahres. What even is this game? What it is, is you have Colorado, which is a card game and is uh, kind of abstract. I mean, it has chameleons on the cover, but it doesn't really matter. They're just colors, right? Colored cards. Um, and it's a fun, classic, evergreen card game. Um, a little less popular, than I think, than some of the other evergreens, like, uh, like uh, Six Nymphed. I would argue No Thanks is probably a little bit more long-lasting than Coloretto. Um, but Coloretto is a classic game that's been enjoyed a long time in, in the hobby. And then they made a board game version of it called Zularetto, which won the Spiel des Jahres. So that's something. And now you have this. Zularetto Mini, or Zularetto Jr. What even is this? Zularetto Jr. is a really unfortunate name. Um, it implies it's a kid's version. And while I guess you could argue that certainly compared to Zularetto, Zularetto Mini is more appropriate for kids, it just leans back into the kind of the pure um, mechanism that Colorado introduces. So it takes Zularetto, which adds more stuff, like coins and actions and stuff like that, but still takes that theme and just boils it closer back down to the experience that uh, Colorado provides. So I'm really fascinated by this game and the fact that it exists. And I almost think this is the best of all the versions. Almost. It really depends on who's playing. I actually prefer this much more than Zularetto. 
I like this version more because A is a little bit more pure than Zuloretto. It takes up a lot less space. Um, still looks great. It's, it still looks basically the same as Zuloretto, but in a much smaller box and with um, a play style which feels much, much closer to the original card game, which I, I still love today. So actually, I would definitely prefer Zuloretto Mini over the full Zuloretto. That's assuming you don't play with expansions. Um, Zuloretto, having won the Spiel des Jahres, has a lot of expansions for it. Zuloretto Mini is the forgotten member of the party, I think, uh, of the family. But that's why I do these video series, right? I don't want people to forget about it. This is actually one of the better games in the uh, Zuloretto family. Now, comparing to Coloretto, that's a bit of a tougher comparison. Obviously, Coloretto is in a very small box, right? A very small card game box. Um, and it boils the game down even further. There are no special actions. And the game is really short, even shorter than Zuloretto Mini. Um, Scoring-wise, it's absolutely fine for gamers. And it's, it's a tiny bit more brutal because there's less ability for you to counteract um, bad draws. So if you get cards that you don't want, they're more punishing than in either Zuloretto or Zuloretto Mini. Um, and for filler, I kind of appreciate that in Coloretto. You know, you, you don't want a game that is, is a, just a straight experience where you, you just kind of feel dull. Like it's a dull, flat experience. <clears throat> and one of the ways that you can create those spikes in enjoyment is to, to have it, uh, you know, have ways that you can kind of hurt each other a little bit, but in a fun and friendly way. And, you know, you can laugh about, oh, I, man, I did terribly and I got this super bad score, right? And people are laughing because they were part of the reason they did that to you. And that can be a lot of fun. So I'd probably argue for hobbyists who want something like this in their collection, the original card game is still a great game today. And that's why it's featured as a board gem, just not this board gem. <laughs> um, but actually for anybody, anybody who's thinking seriously of Zuloretto, if they're able to, I would actually suggest Zuloretto Mini instead. Um, unless you're looking for expansions, at which point Zuloretto's got a lot that you can look for uh, that you can add to the experience to make it bigger or more interesting. It can be a little hard to find. If you're looking to buy a new copy, it would probably be a little expensive, but there are lots of used copies. I shouldn't say a lot. There's a relatively large number, I would think, of used copies floating around. Just, if you're looking for it, look for the two different names. Zuloretto Mini, Zuloretto Jr. They're the same game. Um, just Zuloretto Jr. really leans into the a more childish presentation with more cartoony artwork, at least on the box. I'm not sure about the components. But Zuloretto Mini is a nice presentation that I think everybody can enjoy for adults and children alike. And it's a really great game for a mix of the two because it's not that complicated for children to play. Um, if there's any question at all, you know, obviously if adults are there to help, it'll smooth it over, no problem. Um, but adults can still enjoy it as well. If you're playing with just adults, maybe stick with Coloretto. But if there's even a possibility you're gonna do a mix of uh, kids and adults, um, then look at Zuloretto Mini instead. Zuloretto Mini is my board gem of the week. This is the rating rebuttal. This is where I go over some of the comments from people on Board Game Geek who have rated the game four out of 10 but have comments, and I'll read some of them out loud and respond to them. I'm not going to attribute them. I don't want to make it like a personal thing between me and them. It's just here are some people who really didn't like the game and my response to it. I rate you low. Why? Because getting the original game is way too expensive. Come on, reprint this sucker. Okay, he's rating it low because you can't find it uh, for a reasonable price. Maybe I should look at some 5 out of 10s. Compared with Zuloretto, lack of money actions would make it more difficult. Generally good game, but the feature mentioned above might make a Zuloretto fan not that happy. 
Yeah, I would agree. If a player is coming from Zularetto and then playing this, it might feel like a step backward um, because it is sort of the a lighter, smaller, shorter version of that game. Um, again, I look at it as kind of like a nice in-between between the themeless Coloretto and the kind of the bigger and thematic, but maybe not necessarily um, satisfying to me anyway, Zularetto. I find Zularetto Mini, Zularetto Junior kind of fits that in between. Um, but I can understand if somebody started with Zularetto and then came to this, that wouldn't be very satisfying. You know, it's like, oh, I hear you like, you know, Ticket to Ride. Well, here's Ticket to Ride Junior. Like, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I'm good with Ticket to Ride. At its core, a great game, but I not only have difficulty imagining that I'd play this myself over Coloretto slash Zularetto slash Aquaretto. That's one I haven't mentioned. That's, a, I guess, a standalone spinoff, but I think there's a way to combine them. I'm not sure. But I also think it targets an extremely narrow niche of players who are too young to play Zularetto, ages eight and up, and old enough to understand the game's mathy scoring. If the game is appropriately rated for seven and up, I think that's a small group indeed. Okay, so to break that comment down, Zularetto itself is a family strategy game, but it's a tiny little bit of kind of, you know, math involved in terms of the, the coins and spending coins and, of course, adding up the points. And so this could be described as, you know, a, an easier version of that. That's why it's also known as Zularetto Jr. But I can understand maybe, a, you know, a kid who, find, who finds Zularetto to be a little bit too challenging. It would, they would still have to be old enough to appreciate this game. That's why I don't really consider this. I think Zularetto Jr. is a really bad name for this game. I think Zularetto Mini is more appropriate. Um, because it doesn't feel like a kid's game, as this person pointed out. Everyone in our family, ranging in age from eight and up, found this a rather dull game, I'm afraid. Contrast this to Coloretto, which is at least reasonably diverting. Yeah, it doesn't sound like this person cares a whole lot for Coloretto either, but but I, I don't really understand the person's contrast with Coloretto and Zularetto Mini, saying that at least Coloretto is reasonably diverting when it's basically the same game. I'm not sure why Coloretto is not dull and Zularetto Mini is. Um, maybe the scoring? The Coloretto scoring is a little bit more painful, a little bit more twist the knife a little bit. Um, the scoring is a little bit more challenging in terms of, you know, you're doing well, but if you do badly, you'll do really badly kind of thing. And maybe people find that more exciting. Not as pure as Coloretto, not as versatile as Zularetto. Certainly not my favorite in the series, but the solid foundation makes it worth playing like its siblings. Um, yeah, okay, so not as pure as Coloretto, sure. Um, it has the barn, the barn actions, it has the, the, uh, the offspring, um, a little bonus for, for filling up your, you know, each uh, enclosure. So yeah, Coloretto is the more pure version of that game, absolutely. Not as versatile as Zularetto. I'm not sure what he means, he or she means by, um, by versatile. I mean, certainly Zularetto has a lot of expansions, which this game doesn't. So if you like expansions and you want to, you know, build on the experience and make a bigger and bigger game, if you find that versatility to be... Uh, to be good, then yeah, you know, if you're looking for expansions, if you're the type of person who likes to get expansions for games, don't get this, get get the full-on Zularetto. Um, but in terms of playing with different groups, like versatile in terms of like it's it's robust, you know, it works well with all sorts of different groups, I would argue Zularetto Mini is actually the more versatile game because you can play it with kids, but it's still a game that adults can enjoy, just like Coloretto. It's not really much more complicated than Coloretto. So if you're in, if if it's a family setting, I would argue that Colorado, uh, Zularetto, or Colorado, but Zularetto Mini, is better for a family setting. That's my reading rebuttal. I'm gonna let the cat in because the cat is being noisy. Thanks for watching. Remember, old games like Zularetto Mini don't stop being good just because new games come out. Take care.